Good to be free in the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We want to talk a bit about the ascension of Jesus Christ. All important plan of God. The birth, the protection, the life and ministry of Jesus, death, resurrection, and ascension. They're all very important to the church today. I want just to remind us today of the scripture that we stand on whenever we come around the table of the Lord is found in Acts 13, verse 8 and 9. Jesus Christ the same, yesterday, today, and forever. Be not carried about with divers and strange doctrines, for it is good. It is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meat which we have not profit, which has not profit of them that are occupied therein. We will refuse to be taught anything that's contrary to Jesus Christ being the same yesterday, today, and forever. We will refuse to be taught anything that's contrary to the doctrine of Jesus Christ, Savior, Healer, Baptizer, and the Holy Ghost on fire. We refuse to be carried about with strange doctrines, for we know what is a good thing that our heart be established with grace. We know it's a good thing to be established in the grace and not caught up with the old covenant because it was an old covenant of law. But we're in this dispensation today, the dispensation otherwise known as the church age, the church age. And that's where we are today and we refuse to be carried about with strange doctrines. Now, if we go to the book of Acts, chapter 1, we see Jesus is talking to his disciples and his followers. The first thing we want to notice when we begin on to teach in like this, we refuse to believe the lies of the devil. Those people that would tell us today that the power and authority that Jesus gave us to the twelve apostles only, lie from the pit of hell. So we will look at this scripture with the revelation. What Jesus accomplished on the cross was for the whole church. He's no respecter of persons. It took the apostle Peter a while to realize that. But after a few lessons, he makes a statement I can perceive. In other words, it has been revealed to me that God is no respecter of persons. So what God has planned for the church is for the whole church. I know there's the fivefold ministries and all the pillars of the church and all that, but that all falls into the line. But we never seek the Lord with the attitude that perhaps this promise is not for me. Because once we're born again of the Spirit of God, washed in the precious blood of Jesus, every promise in the book's ours. Because we are that church. Acts 1 and verse 1, it says, The former treatise have I made, O Theotilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach. Luke 1, 3, Luke explains that more openly, what he's talking about there at the beginning of that old treatise. It means the Logos, the Word of God, it means the doctrine from the beginning. That word is interpreted different ways throughout the Bible. But it's interpreted that there is a doctrine of the Church of Christ. And we must never get away from that doctrine. We then see that the Word of God says that Jesus began both to do and teach. We notice there that he began. 
Jesus began his earthly ministry on earth. He, began, he continues his earthly ministry today through the Holy Spirit and his church. The earthly ministry of Jesus is still continuing because it said he began. It didn't say he completed. He began to do and to teach. And that is the realm that we go down when we're looking at a, resur a crucified, resurrected Christ and he's about to send back to heaven. And the Word of God makes it very clear. Why? He's going to ascend back to heaven. If we go to the Gospel of John chapter 16, and we're going to read a few verses there because it explains it out loud and clear. Praise God. The Gospel of John chapter 16. Now I'm deliberately just going slow today and reading a lot of scriptures. Because anything we say that's not backed by scripture is not worth a saying. Anything we hear that's not backed by scripture is not worth a listening to. And it certainly won't work whenever our back's to the wall. John 16 Jesus talking, he said, These things have I spoken unto you that ye shall not be offended. Audrey is ready to refer to, he's not ashamed of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, because it's the power of God unto salvation to them that believe. And here, Jesus said, I'm going to teach you these things that you'll not be offended. You'll not be ashamed. You will not be let down because you will know who you are and who I am. And one thing we must never forget who we are once we're born again of the Spirit of God. We must never forget that we are the children of the Most High God. We are those on the earth that have been given power and given authority. No devil out of hell can stop us. We're unmovable unshakable whenever we're living in the plan of God led by the Holy Spirit down the line of the, the living word of God. Always remember Jesus is the word and Jesus is alive. They shall put you out of the synagogues. They that time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God a service. Oh, that crazy bunch down the road, don't go near them. Man come in that door one night and he said, I was told not to come, but I come anyway. I said, why did you not come? Or why did you come? Or what did, did they use to try to stop you from coming? A man, a fully ordained pastor in a... De, Pentecostal denomination told them not to come because we are a cult. Well, I want to tell you, we preach the gospel of the kingdom. We stand for the Lord Jesus Christ. And that man come, that man got blessed because of the presence of God. So he says here, they'll put you out of the synagogues. In other words, you'll not be accepted amongst your own people. And if they get around to killing you, they think it's the will of God. Many witnesses for Christ have been killed worldwide, martyred. They think they're doing God a favor. They're living for the devil. And they're going to be with the devil in hell. Because they're not loving for Christ. And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. They've got a religious system. They've got a religious doctor. Timothy puts it this way. 
They've got a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. That's all a religious system is. It's a form of self-righteousness, but they deny the power. Because any doctrine without a resurrected Christ is a dead doctrine. If Jesus never had come out of that tomb, we'd have been no better than Jehovah Witnesses and all these other occults because they're serving somebody that's dead. They could take you to Jewish Smith's burial plot and say, there lies Jewish Smith. But whenever they come to the tomb, they said, there's where he lay. Amen. You see, there's where he lay. He's not lying there anymore. He's on the right hand of the Father. And he's making intercession for each and every one of us. And Jesus said here that they're doing these things because they know not the Father nor Jesus. But these things have I told you that when they shall come, ye may remember that I told you of them. And these things I said not unto you that the beginning because I was with you, but now I go away to him that sent me. Now we know that he's talking here about his crucifixion. But he's also talking about his ascension. But now I go my way to him that sent me. He's not going the way of the devil. He's not going the way of the world. He's not going the way of any religion. He says, I'm going my way. And whenever our way becomes the way of God, then we're walking on victory. We're walking on success. He says, I go my way to him that sent me. Remember that Jesus said, I've come to do the will of my Father. Jesus came to earth to do the will of the Father. So he's going his way back to the Father. But you'll remember that I told you these things. I said not unto you at the beginning because I was with you. But now I go my way to him that sent me, and none of you ask me where they go thou. They didn't want to know. They didn't want him to go. They wanted to have him at the price of their own salvation. They wanted him to keep him there at the price of the salvation of the whole world. He said, you're not even asking me. And because I said these things unto you, sorrow has filled your heart. If we have the wrong vision, if we have got the wrong doctrine, the truth sometimes will fill our heart with sorrow. As I said last week, the Jews had this must teaching of the Messiah. And we see it more and more as we get to the, book, the first chapter of the book of Acts. That the Messiah was coming to deliver the nation of Israel from the old Roman Empire. There's much false teaching today what's going to happen in the days that lie ahead. But we must keep our minds and our hearts open to the plan of God and to the will of God and the word of God so that sorrow will not fill our hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. Expedient for who? You. Me. Every human being ever born. Because this is the plan of redemption. 
He says, it's expedient for you that I go away, for if I go not away, take note, if I go not away, if I don't fulfill my walk with God, the plan of God on this earth, and be ascended, go back to the Father, I want you to see the consequences of no ascension. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. How would the devil love that? He would just love to put a spanner in the works in a lot of people's minds because of false teaching, false doctrines. They don't realize that not only was Jesus crucified, he was resurrected and he has ascended back to heaven. And the reason that Jesus has gone back to heaven is that the Holy Spirit will come because he said here, if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you, but if I depart, I will send him unto you. Praise God. You see, the Holy Spirit is the executor of the will of the Father on earth. He's here to carry out the will of the Father. And we can come to him and say, we can't understand this part of this will. And he will reveal it to us. He will explain it to us. Because we're like a people and we've been left a great inheritance. The Word of God says that the gospel is our inheritance. The will of the Father has come <coughs> upon every child, born again, child of God. So Jesus said, if I don't go back to the Father, the Holy Spirit will not come. But I will send him. He's going back to the Father, and the Holy Spirit has come. And he come on the day of Pentecost. And regardless of what many great Pentecostal preachers preach, the Church of Christ was not born on the day of Pentecost. The church was born at the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The church was revealed to the world in the day of Pentecost. Not only is it important that the Holy Spirit will come and endue God's people with power, where Jesus talked about out of your innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. And always remember, we're talking about the whole church of Christ. We're not talking about the hellish doctrines that it was only the twelve apostles that received power and authority. What sort of a mess would that be? Whoever the last disciple today, I think it might have been John, but I'm not sure. People needed healing and said, oh, there he is, he's going to die. I bet they get there quick. Because the day of miracles is over as soon as John dies. That's a load of absolute nonsense. Because God has given us church to power. That's why I brought to that point to you that we must remember that Jesus was talking to more than the twelve. Whenever the angel said, man, why ye stand, you give no. That doesn't mean that there was no woman there. That was just a statement in those days. Just like a statement as today. Somebody gets up to speak and they said, ladies and gentlemen. That doesn't mean that the boys on there, no gentlemen, not been talked to you. It's a statement, it's a fact, it's a greeting. There's nowhere in the Bible that it says it was only the twelve was there. 
Nowhere in the Bible it says it was only 12 in the upper room. And then they say, ah, oh, but there was a 70. I wasn't the sharpest knife in the drawer, but I know the 12 and 70 mix 82. So where did the 120 come from? I know when the scripture says of regarding the upper room and when the Holy Spirit came. He fell upon all of them. A flaming fire in every head. So that's why we got to read the Word of God exactly as it's there and comply it to the other scriptures and see them not together. So not only is it important that the Holy Spirit will come and baptize the people of God with power and authority and impart the gifts of the Spirit for healing and discernment and all the rest of it. But verse 8 says that why the Holy Spirit came. And when he came, and when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. And we want to believe today that the day of the fire, the fire of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit are gone, is the day of the conviction of the Holy Spirit gone. Because that's what the Holy Spirit come for. To convict. To reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they believe not on Jesus. We hear these boys talking. One man, a multimillionaire, because he's, he's preaching a gospel or so-called gospel. In other words, he's more motivated than that's the truth of the gospel. When he was asked the question on national television, is Jesus Christ the only way to the Father, he wouldn't answer it. And yet the Word of God says that the Holy Spirit will convict of sin and judgment and righteousness because they believe not me. Jesus Christ is the only way, is the only truth, and is the only life. And nobody can come to the Father except by Jesus Christ. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. The Holy Spirit is going to convict of righteousness because Jesus has ascended. The crucified, resurrected Christ has ascended and the Holy Spirit is going to convict because Jesus has went to the Father. That final sacrifice has been presented before a holy and living God. And not only has it been accepted, or presented, but it has been accepted. The Father has accepted what Jesus accomplished on the cross, that each and every one of us could be free. Of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. Talking about Satan here. He's already judged. And he's going to be sentenced. You might hear on TV from time to time, Somebody's convicted of a crime and they'll be sentenced at later date. The devil's already convicted. The sentence already laid out in the Word of God of what will be carried out later on. The complete will of God. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. See, that's why whenever we get sealed, God doesn't just heap the whole thing on us. No man used to drive a big digger in a firm not far from here. And you've gone with a car and a trailer. 
asked him for half a ton of sand. And he would come with this big digger and he'd just bury the trailer. See, God doesn't work that way. God gives it to us as we grow up to. As we grow in our understanding, he reveals his plan and his purpose. That's why he said, I have many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. That's why when we get saved, we grow and we're developing. That's where true sanctification comes on. Not the nonsense that's taught in our land today. We're instantly justified at salvation. We are instantly sanctified, which means set apart. But we are growing in that sanctification. We're growing in the wisdom of God. And that's why he said, I'm not going to tell you now because you couldn't, you couldn't handle it. I remember a few days after I was baptized in the Holy Ghost, I went on to a metal home with the padded cells. And a big frame like a gift as a door. And went in there and this big fella, maybe near 30 stone, he grabbed that git and you could feel the very floor under your feet shaking. <coughs> And I thought to myself, what's, what's the problem with that man? Not knowing what I had received. Not fully understanding what I received. I went over to speak to him. And the nurses around the place, oh, don't go near. Stay back, stay back. But I went over, and the closer I got, the more he backed off. He was up against the back wall. Not fully understanding what was going on, but thank God I understand it today. Because I've grew in the knowledge of God. I've grew in the knowledge of the salvation of man. If I had known at that time, I maybe could have had that man out with me. Because the demons that were in him recognized the spirit of God that was in me. The demons in him knew more about the baptism of the Holy Spirit than I knew. And that's why we're growing and developing in God. But the devil's judged. And we can't hear it all now. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come. This is another of the many names of the Holy Spirit. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come. He will guide you into all truth. He's going to guide us into all truth. And we don't want to grieve the Spirit of God by saying, oh, no, you got that wrong. Archie over here says it's different. doesn't matter what Archie may say over there, the Holy Spirit's a teacher. It's our God that's on the throne. When he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into how much truth? All truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. He's bringing the plan of God and he teaches the word of God. And he teaches the plan of God. He will show you all things. That's where the gifts of the Spirit comes in. He will teach us the truth. But he'll take the air that comes along, the lies of the enemy that comes along. He will take them and he will reveal why they are wrong. When I got saved, I heard people preaching and there's something inside of me telling me to reject that, but I couldn't go to those people and tell them why. I had to grow in God. I had to grow in the revelation of the Word of God. That was Him showing us all things. He's teaching us the Word and He's telling us why we don't fall for that. Why we don't fall for hellish doctrines and run around like headless chickens not knowing where we're coming or going. But we're being taught by the precious Spirit of God. 
And on verse 14 it says, He shall glorify me. When we yield to the Spirit of God, we will be glorifying Jesus Christ. When we pray for the sick, we're glorifying the name of Jesus. When we preach the gospel of the kingdom, we're glorifying the name of Jesus. He shall glorify me. That's Jesus speaking. So he's going to glorify Jesus. For he shall receive of mine and show it unto you. Jesus being the living word of God, the Holy Spirit takes the living word of God and he reveals it unto us. And remember, foundation, Jesus Christ. The same yesterday, today, and forever. We will not be tossed about with every wind of doctrine whenever we're listening and being led and being taught by the Holy Spirit. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore I said that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. A little while and ye shall not see me. And again a little while and ye shall see me because I go to my Father. The rest of the plan of salvation depends on every individual step of the plan of God. Jesus knew that he had to be born as a baby into this world. He knew he would be taught under the Jewish religion. He knew he would grow up and he would face trials and temptations along the way, the same as the Word of God said he was tried and tempted without sin. He was born miraculously of the Spirit of God. We're born miraculously of the Spirit of God. We become the children of God. He went down to the river. He was baptized by immersion. <coughs> the Holy Spirit came on him in the form of a dove. Because he was harmless, spotless, sunless, harmless son of God. But when the Holy Spirit comes upon us, he comes with fire. He shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost on fire. Because we have our problems. We have a sun that it has to be dealt with. So just like Jesus was born of the Spirit of God, so are we. Just as Jesus went through the waters of baptism, so do we. Just as Jesus was baptized in the Holy Ghost on fire, so do we need in Jesus' name. To glorify the Son of Christ, Son of God, Jesus Christ. And he says, a little while, I'm going to the Father, but I'm coming back. Jesus is coming. And he's coming soon. The signs of the last days are all around us. He's coming back. And we're running out of time. We're going to leave it there. But all been well, someday we'll just take it up and go on. Because there's so much in these scriptures that we need to know. There's so much the Holy Spirit wants to show us. There's so much that the Holy Spirit wants to reveal to us. We don't want to miss any of it. If there's anything that's my inheritance, I want it. I want to live in the benefits of this wonderful salvation. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and magnify his holy name, and forget not all his benefits. If you have been listening today by internet, and you're not saved, you're not sure that if you died today you would go to heaven, 
Jesus is knocking on your heart's door. Will you yield to Jesus today? Will you give your life to Jesus? If you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, just follow me in this prayer, believing, not just a ritual, but believing, sincerely, repenting of your sin, turning away from your sin and turning on to God. Lord Jesus Christ, I repent of all my sins. I turn away from it, I turn to you and I ask you to come into my heart. Come into my life. Make me a new creature. Make me a child of yours. If you have prayed that prayer, believe him in your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Confess him with your mouth that he died and he rose again. You're a child of God, I want to pray for you. Father God, I pray for those that have called upon you today. I ask you, Lord, for the manifestation of your presence in their life. I pray, Lord, every addiction destroyed by the power and authority of the name of Jesus. I pray, Father God, the healing fire of God flowing through them from head to toe, making them every what whole. And Father God, I pray for every family and family circle represented within the sound of my voice today. I pray household salvation. I pray deliverance in Jesus' name. And Father God, I pray that your name will be uplifted. Lord, we lift Shauna to you today. Lord, we ask you to touch her, to heal her. Love her at her and set her free. Lord, of her, every heart's desire grant to her today. And Father, we pray for Philip. We thank you for the improvement. But Lord, we want to see him out of that hospital. We want to see him healthy, wealthy, and wise. So Lord, I pray that your hand will be mightily upon him. Lord, with creative miracles today. Lord, he'll come out of that hospital. Lord, with a mighty testimony for you. Lord, all other prayer requests we look to you, Lord, in Jesus' name. And I pray, Father God, that you will just breathe upon those people today. Lord, you know they're every need. Lord, you paid for the Calvary. We're asking you, Lord, for healing to flow through them in Jesus' name. And God's people said amen, amen. and shout it. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. We don't know if but the day, but we'll take us up another day. For the Lord wants us to know these things. Mm -hmm.